hi there uh, this is an attempt to cover the system very log to some extent though uh, may not be the complete system very log but the uh, fundamentals of very log system very log system very log uh, is divided into two uh, categories system very log is for design system very log is for verification so in this uh, video tutorial, we will be discussing system very log for verification. So we must be familiar with the data types that are there in the system very log. We have uh, learned already in very log HDL, a signal or a variable can take either of these values, 0, 1, x, z. Whereas in system very log, exclusively a variable can take zero or one. So we must be knowing uh, what type of this data type can take uh, uh, two state uh, values and which type of uh, data types will take this uh, four state values. And uh, sign and unsigned these keywords uh, we are already familiar in very log it's there and coming to this integer data type all these are uh, uh, they belongs to integer here that we see here by the way this site with uh, vlsiverify.com uh, is the base that i am making uh, to cover this system very log uh, fundamentals so here uh, we see this in int is a keyword, integer, all these are the keywords basically. So here uh, int belongs to two state data type. And the size is this is 32 bit uh, signed integer. And uh, integer, this belongs to four state data type size again this you can see here 32 bit uh, signed integer whereas uh, it's this integer and then uh, reg and this time these three are already we uh, those who are familiar with it like they might be knowing that they uh, belongs to this four uh, state data type the new data type that we have to focus here is int, short int, long int, this bit, byte, logic. So if you observe here, logic is for state data type. Rest all, they belong to two state data type. Meaning, if a variable is declared with the int, so that variable value is by default zero, and that belongs to two state data type. So keep in mind that the new data type here are int, short int, long int, bit, byte. Byte, if you focus here, it, it is eight bit signed integer. If you declare any variable with the keyword byte, it, it will take eight bit, eight bits, and it is a signed integer. All right, so we'll see that with the demonstration later on. But for now, we have to keep in mind that int, short int, long int, bit, byte, logic. These are the new data types in uh, system very log. And then we have here something called short real. This is also a new data type here because real and real time already uh, there in very large list here. And then this void data type. These are used exclusively in function declarations. In function, uh, while we see the function, function may uh, return some, uh, you know, it may return some data type. In, for example, integer, it may return. So if a function is not returning anything, then we can keep this void. We'll see uh, while uh, we, are, we cover the examples. But for now, just know that there is a void keyword, which is also a data type 
it is a non existence data is known as white data type and then the, there is exclusively this keyword string in very large hdl this is not there so we can use the keyword string and then any variable you can assign and to that variable we can uh, you know uh, uh, give any string and then this event event data type uh, is there in very large HDL. We are familiar with this. And uh, here we have user defined data types. This is done with the help of keyword this type def. So for example, here in this case, uh, this is int my int. This is there already. Uh, I mean, uh, int keyword is there, and you can have some variable with that. Now, my int will be of type int. So, the moment when you put this uh, type def, and uh, which type of data type that you are mentioning here, and the variable that you are, uh, uh, I mean, using, now this variable itself will become a kind of data type. Like in this case, my int is it has become the data type. So to this my int, what belongs? This a and b variables belong. It means what a and b variable indirectly they belong to type int. That's the meaning. So where it is used and all uh, with the examples we'll see later on. And there is a enumeration data type with enum. And uh, that's all. So the new data type again, I repeat here int, short int, long int, bit, byte, and then logic. Remember, logic is the only one which belongs to this first state data type. And then we have this short real. And then void is another data type. And then string is another data type. And because event is not a new, because it's there in the very log. So I'm not terming it as a new data type in, uh, I mean, that uh, new data type. And uh, here type def is something that we have to consider in system very log. And enum is also something that we have to consider in system very log. So with this, uh, let's proceed here to our system uh, very log arrays. System very log has got uh, you know wide uh, variety of arrays. So, for example, if you see here, uh, fixed size array in system very log, single dimension array. Multi-dimensional array. In multi-dimensional, for example, two-dimensional array, three-dimensional array, like that. And packed and unpacked array in system very log. Dynamic array. Th this is something new here, dynamic array. And there is something associative array is also something new. And uh, uh, these uh, arrays like fixed array and the single dimensional array, all this in Verilog we have seen already. Though we cover here with examples. So for example, here in this case, in fixed array, we are already, this, this is known already in Verilog HDL, this one is uh, already seen, like uh, if, you, if you want to declare some array, uh, in this case, ARR is an array. Uh, you know that this the dimension is three here. This is two colon zero. The other way to denote this two colon zero is like just put three. It means like uh, this got uh, you know uh, like this. The indexes are uh, you know spread over like this. But here in this case, uh, it's, it's uh, starting from uh, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. Total six uh, indexes are there. So it, uh, we, we can put here six in that case. 
uh, and then here, how we assign to this array. Uh, this is the way to assign directly to this array. We use here, uh, like if I zoom here, this is the tick. And then within the uh, braces, we are going to keep five, six, seven. So you know this uh, uh, here, uh, when it is kept three, like uh, what I mean is here, uh, we have the option like here, we can either keep two column zero or zero column two here. In that case, array of zero, array of one, array of two, like, uh, you know, starting from array of zero, if you put here zero, and if you put here two, you start with array zero, then array one, then uh, array means, I mean, this AR, array two. If you put this way, then you start with the ARR of two, ARR of one, then ARR of, a r r of zero. So the shortcut if you put like how many uh, you know locations are there, if you put this way, then you're supposed to be starting with array of I mean with zero, like like this is the case here. The moment when we have kept uh, here int a r r the shortcut three here, it starts with zero here. So getting me. So let's see this example here. We have kept the five here. It means what? Array of zero will take this 100. Array of one will take this 200. Array of two will take this 300. Array of three will take this 400. And then array of four will take this 500. So starting from zero to four, total five. So, here, uh, this is the loop that we have here in the system area log for each. When we use this loop for each, exclusively we'll study the loops later on. But for now, if you if you use this for each, and then it what it does is it automatically starts with the uh, you know index zero, and then as many uh, you know locations are there, it will keep incrementing by itself. And then that's how it, it proceeds this for each. Like in this case, array automatically a simulator will understand, like, uh, you know, uh, the, since we use this array, so it, it, simulator is already known with that, you know, the size of this array. So the dimension here, I mean, uh, locations are uh, starting from zero to four. So it it it, it starts with zero. And then it comes here inside the loop, whatever is there, it does that job. Since few more are there, like then it goes here. And then this time automatically incremented to one. And then it does this job again. The moment when it reaches to four, so automatically it is known to the compiler that, yeah, it has reached to the peak of this array. So then it does its job and then it comes out of the loop. So this one, let's copy. Let's go to the EDA Playground. EDA Playground is a platform where we can work with system error log uh, codes. If you don't have system, I mean, locally installed any uh, simulator for system error log, then the best way is to go to this uh, EDA playground. EDA playground. Then you register with your Gmail account. Then uh, here where uh, you register, like if I sign out, uh, this I'm signing out. So now if I go to the, this login, Login here with Google, and then your Gmail account will be shown up. Uh, besides that, in one of the tab, uh, if you have logged in with Gmail, then it, uh, automatically it will show up that because I did it already, so it is not showing me up. Uh, here, uh, you can start uh, working here. 
you can put here your uh, the practice code that you want to do the practice and then take the simulated here here this simulator aldec rivera pro though this is commercial with the gmail account we will have the access to that other simulators like parents mentor request task synopsis uh, we will not be having with normal gmail account access only aldec rivera pro will be having access so use that and now let's demonstrate this one let me zoom bit here so this you know this module is known to you this is the module name is known to you and int is also known to you just got to know that it's a data type and then this is user defined this array and uh, we are denoting the size here is a phi the size of this array is phi uh, in each location uh, like well, how many bits it can take 32 bits it can take because this int uh, you know just now we have seen here mm, the data types we have seen this int if you see here it's a 32 bit sign integer so this example we are trying here this example so now uh, for each i explained already that uh, it is a loop it starts with zero and this i uh, this variable we don't we did not declare anywhere here other than for each if, if you are using for loop then we're supposed to be declaring this i whereas in for each case it's not required and then uh, data display is already known and here is a format specifier this one is a format specifier and then uh, here we have this i this is for first format specifier here for this and the contents of this array of zero is is where uh, this is this second one is for that so uh we have set this all deck let's run this one Now, if you see here, starting from 0 to 4, total 5 elements are here. That's what the size here, this area size is this 5. And then in each of the location, what we are doing each time here, when it uh, iterates uh, through this loop, uh, first 0, this is array of 0. And this, the value here uh, that we already assigned to, array of zero this hundred so that's what here we see in the print here hundred so likewise this is this iteration will go till we reach the peak of this array size so that's how this is uh, this one about this loop i mean this this array now moving ahead here if you see the multi-dimensional array Oh, for example, here if you have if you see this this example here. So starting from you start from left hand side. You start from left hand side. Total six elements are there. Okay, in the first first uh, location. In the first location, how many elements we can keep? Two elements we can keep, meaning. Array of zero will have two elements. Array of zero and then this zero. One element, we keep this one. Then array of zero, this is this will this time it will become one. 
array of z array of zero of one here this one in that this hundred will sit next time what happens this will be like array of one this time again with one zero in that this two will go again this one and this one and this 200 will go likewise so this uh, entire thing will happen so how is that we are declaring this one the, already shown here the same thing again be repeated here and how is that assignment is done that this this explanation what i have done is what shown here so now how is that we are printing it this one this is again with the help of for each but this time the difference is two variables we have used So now, again, here I'm emphasizing the same point. Nowhere we declared that this i is in our integer, j is in our integer. We did not declare anywhere. Compiler automatically understands this array, this array. How to, it, I mean, uh, iterate through this array. First, like the way I discussed, uh, like first going to, I mean, zero, and then the second one will be like first zero and then one. And then only this i will be incremented. It's, it, it kind of like inner loop and outer loop. So that's way, uh, that's how it is um, uh, performing. Let's see this, uh, you know, in the compiler. You just copy this code, go to your uh, media playground, and uh, this time let's uh, paste this one here paste it okay now you see this one here one two three four five six total six like i mean if you consider it as a one one group put together here this one and hundred Total six elements are there like that. Of course, in each element again, subdivisions are there here. And uh, coming to this array here, how it is uh, happening? First will be like array of i, like oh, acting like a outer loop, and array of j is acting like inner loop. Got it. So now. Let's compile this one. Oh, here. You'll see the same what we have explained. Array of zero, array of zero. For two instances, the first one, I will be constant. The J will be like incrementing zero and one. And then the corresponding uh, assignment will be done. Next, inner loop is out, over. So then it comes to the outer loop. It is incremented i, then it's going to one. And the inner loop again working here, starting from zero and then incremented by one, one that is. So that's how uh, this multi-dimensional arrays are. Now the same goes with the three-dimensional array as well here. This you can try out. And uh, coming to the scalar versus vector, this is known to you because uh, when we don't have any, you know, like logic, V, A, R, 1, this variable 1, if you take, this is one bit, single bit. And this also single bit, where 2 is also single bit. But the moment when we keep like this, the bit size, if you declare, then this is becoming the vector type. All right. So, coming to this packet and unpacked array, uh, this side here, whatever is there uh, here, left hand side to the variable left hand side. If you have this kind of declaration, it, it is called packet array. Again, I repeat, you have the variable, you have the variable, left hand side, if you are keeping the size, then such 
such notation, such declaration is called packet array. So this is an example of packet array. Again, this also we have to start from the left here. If you start from the left, here we have three different locations, like for this array, array of two, array of one, array of zero. And in each location, we have this four bits. So like if you see here, this this example here from the figure, array of zero or four here, array of one, four, array of two here, four, all right? So the assignment is same again, the, everywhere here, the way we are uh, doing the assignment from the beginning, if you see here, this put the tick and Within the parentheses, we are keeping this, uh, you know, the value that we, we, we want to assign. Okay, and that is, uh, uh, th these are unpacked errors. So here, if you notice here, uh, your variable is here. To the right hand side, the size is there. These are called unpacked errors. So here, these are the examples for packet array here. Mm, this one here, it's a packet array. Again, I repeat this packet array means to to the variable left hand side. If you have this declaration, then that such will become packet. We can have packet and unpack it together also. So, like if you see this unpacked here, as I said here, you will be having the right hand side this declaration. So, combination of packet and unpacked array is this kind of thing in this how do, how do we do this one i mean uh, how do we understand this one you start from left here you have three locations array of two array of one array of zero and each location in each location like array of two inside that we have two again subdivisions area i mean in that array of two this one is there this zero is there in each location, we have this, uh, you know, five bits. That's how we have to understand. Like if you see here, this is like, this group let's call as a one single element. Here, this is second element. This is a third element, right? The total three elements are there, right? In each location, how many elements can sit? Two elements can sit. See, two elements are sitting here. And in and of that element, what might be the size maximum, it can go up to five bits. That's why here no not as I mean everything is uh, with the five bits is possible. The 15 is also possible with five uh five bits, the declaration of this. So that's how this is the combination of this packet and unpacked arrays. So what we have covered is very quick summary is uh, we just had seen this data type and system very log arrays. In system very log arrays, we just have covered one till this packed and unpacked array. So in the next video, we'll see this dynamic array and associative array. And uh, anything else here? Yeah, that's all.